Hi friends, welcome to the online session. As we have discussed earlier, research is the most important tool and technique used for knowledge creation. Let us, today let us discuss one of the major issues that distract the essence of research. In the era of information technology where all the information so far available to mankind on a particular topic or subject is accessible by a single click. The issue we are going to discuss is of utmost importance that affects academic integrity adversely. Then can you tell me what is the issue referred to here? Yes that is plagiarism. This is the third unit of our paper research methodology. In this session, let us discuss the following. What is plagiarism? Origin of the term plagiarism, definitions of plagiarism, when plagiarism occurs, various types of plagiarism, then how plagiarism affects academic integrity and lastly how to avoid plagiarism. Thus let us examine what is plagiarism. The term plagiarism is derived from the Latin word plagiarius which means kidnapper or plunder etc. In this context plagiarism means to commit literary theft. Let us simply say that stealing of one's words, phrases, ideas, line of thoughts, etc. and presenting it as our own. Now let us go into the origin of the term of plagiarism. According to Jonathan Bailey, in 80 AD a Roman poet Marshall used the term plagiarius to call Ferdinand who used Marshall's work as his own. By this time there was no copyright law so no legal remedy was available for Marshall. He wrote a series of verses against Ferdinand. In these verses Marshall used the word plagiarius as calling him as kidnapper. Here Marshall was not bothered about any kind of citation or acknowledgement, but he only concerned about the concerned about the lack of payment. In, in 1601 AD, author and satirist Ben Johnson used the word plagiary to denote literary theft. In 1775 AD, Samuel Johnson defined plagiarism in his dictionary as a thief in literature, one who steals the thoughts or writings of another. In modern context, plagiarism dates back to the period of enlightenment, that is between 17th and 19th century when greater con concentration was given to individual creativity and authorship. This period witnessed the emergence of modern copyright law. In recent times of internet and digital facilities like digital data processing and digital data processing manipulation of digital data became easier and plagiarism became a major issue. However, let us discuss the official definitions of plagiarism. Many scholars defined plagiarism, but here I got very simple and easy definitions. First, to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own use another's production without crediting the source. Next one, to use the words 
or ideas of another person as if they were your own words or ideas. Third one, to present as new and original an idea or work derived from an existing, existing source. Now let us discuss how and when plagiarism occurs. That is when you are plagiarized some occasions. Firstly, use of someone's unique or particularly apt phrase without acknowledgement. Secondly, use of someone's argument or line of thought without acknowledgement. Thirdly, use of paraphrased wording of someone without citation. Here, paraphrasing we are already we have have already discussed in the previous unit when data collection in this research process note taking is various kind type of note taking one is summarizing paraphrasing quotation verbatim we already discussed use of copy and paste from a digital source to a document or article without quotation marks or without citing all sources Next one, use of verbatim reproduction of a text without quotation. You have already mentioned the verbatim word, that is word to word copying of text. Next one, use of someone's drawings, maps, pictures, pictures and images without documentation. Then let us move an important area of discussion that is various types of plagiarism. On the basis of nature of citation, many scholars divided the plagiarism into various types. Some scholars divide as two that is intentional and unintentional. The word itself denotes what type of plagiarism is. Then other scholars divided it ten or eight or ten like that. Here I am taken a six type of common and very important plagiarism. This, these are the various types of plagiarism, global plagiarism, paraphrasing plagiarism, verbatim plagiarism, mosaic plagiarism, cell plagiarism. Now we can analyze one by one. First global plagiarism, taking the entire work of another person and using it is as you are on. This kind of plagiarism is most severe, severe one because it is in here one person use the entire work of another person without any credit, giving any credit or citation or acknowledgement. Next, taking a text in full from online source, just cut and paste the full, sorry, take from the online source, full text, whether it is a paper, thesis, or an article, etc., and submission of it as your own. This is the most severe, deliberate, and direct plagiarism. Next one is paraphrasing plagiarism. You know the word paraphrasing, that is, uh, transfer the text into our own words rephrasing some of the text of another person in your own words without citation. It is a serious offense. Commonly, the paraphrasing is not comes under the plagiarism. But when we not give any citation or acknowledgement or credit to the original author, uh, that time it comes under plagiarism. Translation of some of the text from another language to your your language without sight. For example, from the English language, a book or an article, a full text uh, or any uh, a paper translate to Malayalam and reproduce it in your uh, words, whether it is some paragraph, anything else. Next, verbatim plagiarism. You know the word verbatim, that is word to word copying of text to our document, direct copying and pasting of a source 
into a document without any citation. This is the most common type of plagiarism committed in digital data processing. Why it is common? It is more easier. The students or any other people can easily get and cut and paste to uh, the same word and to publish or to present as our own. Next one is mosaic plagiarism. The word itself, we can see mosaic from collection of various compounds and create a new one. Also known as patchwork plagiarism or incremental plagiarism. Create a new text by copying phrases, passages, ideas from various sources without any citation or without any credit to the original or acknowledgement. Next one is self plagiarism. Here no theft, but this also a serious offense because here using your own published work in another publication without citation. For example, uh, when one person stealing, uh, sorry, one person resubmitted his article or any paper in another place or any other uh, degree that is self resubmission of your own work to another institution or agency as if it is as an original work, reusing of ideas, phrases or data from your previous assignments without citation also comes under this group. In research methodology, there are strict rules for citation. You must follow one of these citation. Citation without proper rules or, cita or, or citation style. Here, commonly used citation styles are MLA. You know, MLA, that is Modern Language Association. It is mostly used in humanities and language, uh, foreign language. It just a MLA handbook is in available in our library. APA that is Association of Psychological American Association of Psychological Association. It is mainly used in psychology education etc. In Chicago notes and bibliography is another site of style of citation that is mainly used in history subjects and Chicago or the date mainly used in science subjects. Now our topic of discussion is plagiarism and academic integrity. So let us move to explain about plagiarism and how it affects academic integrity. It is a theft of an intellectual property intellectual property. One person stealing another person's intellectual property that is words, ideas, etc. In 15th and 16th century, no such idea of intellectual property. Idea the, but they believed that intellectual property is owned by the creator. Thus, the great literary men and many artists are copying their work, copied their work. Secondly, plagiarist enjoys unethical gains. Here, some person stealing another person's work and he enjoys by getting employment, higher position, etc. It's also, it's a Next one, plagiarist commits an offense under patent, intellectual property right, copyright law. Next one is plagiarism undermines important academic values and ethics. Next, plagiarism undermines institutional standards for recognition and assigning grades and awards. Sometimes it may be affect the grade of the institution also, not only the students, but also the institution also. We have already discussed the details of plagiarism and its consequences. 
then let us examine how to avoid plagiarism. There are many tips to explain the many tips to avoid plagiarism. Making a list of writers, authors and viewpoints you discovered in your research and using this list to ensure correct presentation of material in your paper. You make a list of writers to correct or to ensure correct the presentation of material. Next one, identify and categorize your notes, ideas, summaries of other materials and ensure appropriate citation or acknowledgement. Here, when the data collection time itself, we can identify whether it is summary, whether it is quotation, whether it is paraphrasing, whether the text is verbatim, then, then we can easily cite. The next one, use of quotation marks while using verbatim reproduction of text. Then keep your sincerity in citation by citing and acknowledging your references and make your work more valuable, credible and ethical. For this, you have to develop your skills and confidence in research to avoid mistakes in future research. Thank you.